Congressman Ron Paul has always said his campaign would fare better in the caucus states, and yet he was a disappointing third place on Saturday in Nevada. So how does he view the stakes tonight as three states vote? We spoke just a bit earlier. The congressman was in Minnesota. Paul is with us now. Sir, the three contests tonight, Colorado, Missouri, and Minnesota, does Ron Paul think he has a chance to win in any of those three states? Well, we're going to win some down. Well, we're going to win some delegates, whether we're going to come in first or one, two, or three. I don't know exactly that, but uh, we feel positive about uh, moving along and picking up more delegates, but we'll have to wait and see how many. If we wake up Wednesday morning, though, eight contests will have been held in the Republican race for president by then. If Ron Paul is 0 for 8, meaning no wins, uh, what would that say about your prospects of actually winning the nomination? You certainly have an impact on the race, and you're certainly getting delegates, but if you're 0 and 8, are you a viable candidate to win the nomination? Well, it depends on what happens for the next 52, I mean, 42 states, you know, there'll be a lot more primaries to go. So, but obviously you do have to start picking up, and, and we have some others. Uh, we're uh, optimistic we're going to keep picking up delegates. That's what the other ones are doing. Nobody else is, uh, uh, you know, about to, at this moment, jump ahead of Romney. But I'll tell you what, uh, I, we, uh, we think we're going to keep, keep doing this, and we have a very good chance on what's happening on, uh, up in uh, Maine. As you campaign across the country, one of the things you say in every stump speech is that if you're president of the United States, you'll get much more serious about the deficit. You say you will cut $1 trillion in the first year in office. Uh, ben Bernanke, a man with whom you often disagree, the chairman of the Fed, has been testifying before Congress in recent days, and he's been asked this question, essentially at a time of a fragile recovery, how quickly can you cut? And his focus has been, yes, deal with the deficit, but be careful. Let's listen. But we need to at least avoid doing harm. I would say do no harm is an important uh, uh, piece of advice I would offer you. Um, so uh, there is, a, there is a, a, a balancing act. What he's trying to say there is don't cut too much too soon. You agree or disagree? Well, I would question the credibility of the chairman. I mean, go back and look at what he said in 06 as he was moving into becoming chairman. He said, don't sweat it, people. The markets are great. There's no housing distortions, no bubbles. And he, he's not been very good in predicting and warning us about anything. I mean, he, he was around uh, when the NASDAQ bubble was about to burst. He didn't uh, warn Greenspan at the time. So I would say that be careful in uh, using him as your expert witness. Let me ask you what a President Paul would do. If you were president at this moment about a couple of world hotspots, number one is Syria. The United Nations Security Council, because of a veto by China and Russia, did not pass a resolution the Obama administration wanted, uh, putting more pressure on President Assad. The President of the United States has said he believes Assad should step down. Uh, you've seen the reports and the videos, I'm sure, of the killing and the bloodshed, a government killing its own right. citizens. What would a President Paul do about that right now? Well... That problem has been going on for many, many years, if not centuries. Uh, bad governments, look at what they did. The communists killed millions, hundreds of millions of people. So it's a tragedy it's that happens in Africa all the time. But I'm not representing those countries. Uh, as a congressman and as a president, I would represent the United States. And I don't think it's a wise thing to get involved in the civil war that's going on in Syria. Uh, that would cost money, it would cost lives, and it would may, may well spread. And uh, already, because we are agitating, we're already very much involved trying to get the U.N. to do this and that. And the, uh, the Russians now don't like it. The Chinese don't like it. So what should be a domestic civil war is now turning into an international crisis. And uh, the Russians and the Chinese are reacting to us by pushing this. I think it's none of our business. I think it's a tragedy, but I can point out many tragedies, many folds greater than this, but it's not in American interest. Now, as president, if there was a crisis like this and was building and somebody's making the case, oh no, it's in America's national security, I'd go to the Congress. I wouldn't go to the United Nations or NATO. I'd go to Congress and say, do you think this deserves a war? If it does, you declare the war, then we'll go to war, fight and win it. But to assume that uh, we have an automatic obligation to be over there, I think, is a very dangerous thing to assume. And what would you do about the current situation unfolding in Egypt? They say 19 Americans who are working for pro-democracy groups, assisting the citizens of Egypt, trying to build political parties and the like. Uh, Egypt wants to put them on trial and prosecute them uh, for meddling in its affairs. What would a President Paul do about that? Well, I think we should do everything conceivable you know, diplomatically to uh, get our people out.
but obviously we have to look at this in context of how this came about. We propped up Mubarak for 40 years and tens of billions of dollars, I think it's close to $50 billion, which meant that it was an artificial situation. So now the revolt and the blowback comes from this, that there's a revolt against our puppet dictator. And who's taken over? People who don't like us and who hate Israel. And this is backfiring on us. Our intervention, our propping up of Mubarak is coming back to haunt us. But as far as the people he's holding, we should do everything conceivable diplomatically to get them out of there. Appreciate your insights on this important night. Three states voting tonight. We'll check the results, and then, sir, we'll see you this weekend in Maine. Take care, sir.